Yeah, this is a head from a tape recorder. You guys want to take a look at this too? Yeah. Right? So ordinarily you don't see that on the end of a wire, you see it inside a tape recorder, right? For those of you who still play cassettes and stuff like that, this is the sort of active reader part of a cassette. And if we, um, if we listen to it, I can listen to uh, train tickets or anything else that has magnetically encoded information. This operates in exactly the same principle as the guitar pickup. It's just very focused in the sort of area in which it reads. It's got this tiny, 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 tiny little gap here, and that's where it does its listening. So you have to change the field over the gap in order to hear it. And it only listens to changes information. If I hold this still, there's nothing for it to read. What it reads is a change in magnetic information, right? So when I move it, I pick up oh, what, are, what amounts to sort of billions of tiny little magnets that are coded onto the surface of this thing. Uh, now this isn't designed, this wasn't made as sound, right? This was made as uh, tells me which train I'm on and whether or not I paid my money and where I got on and all that kind of crap. All the, um, but we have those sorts of cards all over the place, like in our, uh, oh, let's listen to my visa. <laughs> Bad credit. Bad credit. Bad credit. Oops. Um, so every time we stick a card in a card reader, we're also picking up magnetic information. Uh, same way that the hard drive in your computer works. Is it still basically just a magnetic disk? You were going to say something? Um, well, what about the visual aspect of magnetic tape? How much? What do you mean? Well, well for example, like those. Um, you should be able to use a videotape to, for, to make a visual s signal or to make a loose picture cameras, video yeah. magnet, yeah. videotape, like how I mean videotape as opposed to audio tape? Yeah, like how is it like... What's different yeah. about it? Well, you're still encoding, in, it, it's encoded, right? You're sort of coding the information. Um, and so you can encode picture, you can encode sound, you can encode all kinds of other stuff too on magnetic tape. But you encode it in one way and then you decode it, you take it off and you turn it back into pictures. Right? So uh, there's nothing sort of inherently soundy about magnetic tape, uh, which is proved by the sort of current application. It's not, this isn't a sound application, it's a data application. Right? It's really just a way of storing your personal stuff. Like if I had the right decoder, I could actually find out something from my library card, <laughs> right? But I don't. I'm turning it into sound, which isn't what it was intended for me to do. It was intended to store data, right? So there's personal information about my borrowing history or something like that on there that I don't even know how to access because I can't decode it properly. All I can do is decode it in improperly by listening to it as sound. <coughs> I mean, that's a big part of what music is, is doing something wrong. <laughs> something like that. Um, so, uh, we use uh, magnetic microphones of this, for instance, we could make guitar pickups out of tape heads as well. They work uh, reasonably well as tape heads. I can listen to uh, guitar strings reasonably well with it, if I'm very close to it. But this makes a sort of very localized guitar pickup. We could put a pickup on each string of our guitar, for instance so that each of the six or twelve or however many strings we put on our guitar is amplified in a different way. So like we can have one signal going to each of six loudspeakers in the room so the chord kind of comes at us from all directions or something like that. Um, guitar pickups don't have to all pick up the same signal at the same time. But that's what this does. I'm just a little confused on the, if that's the pickup in a tape recorder, how does it kick it from like an air recorder to that type of, I'm just confused. How does it, like if, how if does that, it work in its intended direction? Yeah, well like, I mean if that's, if that's the type of pickup that's in a, like a tape recorder actually, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand, I, I would figure that would be like an air recorder in there, but that's not an air recorder. Oh, well you're absolutely right, the one that picks up the sound from the air yeah. is an air mic. Okay, and then it, and then it. But then in order to get it onto the tape. It's got to be a device like this. Okay. Okay, but to get it out of the air, you're absolutely right. It needs to have somehow be coupled to the vibrations in the air. So it's a it's an air mic looks something like this so or whatever. If you, if you plug that into a mic, or on the other end is a mic, and you just take that and put it across your train ticket. More? You mean can I re-record my train ticket? <coughs> Audio. Yes, I can. I mean, I need a, I need some amplifiers in between, but yes, you can do that. Really easily, huh? Yeah, so this is just taken out of its normal context, but what it does when it writes onto the tape, 
is uh, takes signal from a microphone, amplifies it in a suitable way, and then it imparts a signal. It writes a signal along the tape you because the tape. Huh? You can hear that happening. <coughs> no, you, well, it does it. To, it's it's <coughs> magnetic information. You can't hear it unless you find some way to amplify it. But it 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 writes a signal onto the tape most of the time. Right now, I'm using it in the read function. It reads it writes it in just the same way, only in reverse. So it takes an electrical signal and it superimposes that. It, what it does is it reorganizes the magnets. Mm. Right? <laughs> On a blank tape, the magnets are scattered in every which direction. They're sort of, um, they're like magnetic static, right? There's no organization to them. It's a sort of white noise of <coughs> unorganized, tiny little magnets. And when I make a recording, I reorganize them in a way that's analogous to the sound that I want to superimpose on the magnetic tape. So they're going to be concentrations of north-south magnets and then concentrations of south-north <coughs> magnets to generate frequencies. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. do, do magnets erase that then? Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, but in order for them to erase them really well, they have to really <coughs> scatter the magnetic information, not reorganize it. Right? If I just dab magnets onto here, I actually create little noises. You can record magnetic tape, for instance, without the aid of tape heads, but you can make um, magnetic music just with magnets by banging magnets onto magnetic tape without ever having actually recorded it. <coughs> right? It's sort of like a direct to magnetic tape method of making music. Which you could do with film all the time, right? You could make a picture and read it as sound. Um, any other questions about that? <coughs> no? Okay. Um, I want to rush slightly ahead to uh, two more ideas. One is, uh, while we're busy sort of transferring information from one form to another, whether that's magnetic information into electrical information, or vibrations through a hard surface, or vibrations through soft air, um, 